Baptism is important because it puts us in spiritual union with Christ and gives us power to overcome sin. So we'll start off in the book of Romans chapter six, looking at verses one through four. It says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Verse two, the most high forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Verse three, know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Yeshua Christ were baptized into his death. Verse four, therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. So when we come up out of that water, we're in spiritual union with our Lord and Savior, Yeshua. We're in that spirit, spiritual union to walk after the new man or to get a brand new start and walk in the newness of life. And so this baptism does put us in spiritual union with Christ. And so we'll turn over to Ephesians chapter two. So we go over to Ephesians chapter two. We're gonna look at verses four through six. And it says, the, but the most high who's rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us. Even when we were dead in sins, hath he quickened us together with Christ. So that word quickened means to be made alive. So when we went through the water and we came up, we were quickened together with Christ. We were made to be in spiritual union with Christ. And it says, by grace, ye are saved. Verse six, now notice what it says. And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Yeshua. So our father in heaven has now made it to where we're in spiritual union and we're seated together in heavenly places in Christ. That's our spiritual position in Christ, all right? And so in time to come, it, it says that in verse seven, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and all kindness toward us through Christ Yeshua. All right, so through that baptism, when we're in spiritual union and we're living a, a righteous and a set apart life, within time, the Most High will begin to reveal those things that we have never seen those things that have not entered into our mind or imagination. He will, he will show us the beauty to come, the glory that's gonna come with that baptism, but we must keep our garments clean. So the first thing is we're in spiritual union with Christ. Second of all, the importance of that baptism, we have power over evil spirits. So let's look at that in uh, the book of Colossians. We're gonna go to Colossians chapter two. So we go to Colossians chapter two, looking at verse six. It says, as ye have therefore received Christ Yeshua the Lord, so walk in him. So the, the beautiful thing about walking in the newness of life, we can actually walk in him and now overcome all of our strongholds, right? Anything that Satan has put up on us, we have power now to overcome it. We can walk in Christ. Verse seven, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as ye have been taught abounding therein with thanksgiving. Now, I'm just gonna skip over to verse nine. Notice what it says. For in him that is in Christ dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Verse 10 and ye are complete in him. 
all right? We're, we're complete, that's our position in Christ. We're complete in him, right? We need nothing else. When we have Christ, we are complete and we can be content with life. So it says, and ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. So in him, there's not a evil spirit, right? That can get in our, our way that we can't overcome. We can pray to our Father in heaven through Christ or in his name, right? And those spirits are subject to us, all right? And this is the power that we have, and this is the importance of, of that baptism. It puts us in that spiritual union with Christ to, to overcome sin, to overcome all evil spirits. And the beautiful thing about it is we are complete in Christ, who is the head of all principality and power, and we are seated in heavenly places in Christ, Yeshua, our Lord and Savior. The proper way to be baptized, um, it's not what we're seeing going on uh, in today's uh, mainstream uh, I would say Christian churches, this is not a put down or, or, or to bash the Christian churches, but when I, when I was coming up, um, I remember being in church, they would ask who wanted to accept Christ, and you know, you would raise your hand, and you would say the sinner's prayer at that, at that moment, and ask Christ to come into your life, and then you were pronounced that you were saved. And there's nothing wrong with doing that, we, we're supposed to confess uh, our sins and we're supposed to confess Christ. We're supposed to do that. So that part is correct. But to say that at that moment we're saved, now we're running into a, a problem. There's, there's going to be problems with that individual. So the first thing that that person needs to do is they need to find out what sin is. A lot of people don't even know what sin is. And so for them to get baptized, they need to first look at what sin is. And then once they find out what sin is, then they need to bring forth fruit, meet for repentance. They need to prep themselves for that baptism. They need to be in a state of repentance. So when you go to uh, the book of uh, Matthew, uh, chapter three, verse eight, it says, bring forth therefore fruits meet for repentance. Now, if we're gonna bring forth fruit or fruits meet for repentance, then what are we repenting from? Okay, so if a person says, yes, I accept, I accept Christ, I believe in him, that's good, we're supposed to do that. But have you repented? Have you, have you, have you repented of your sins? So let's look at the sins that we are to repent from. So we're gonna to go to the book of Galatians chapter five. And we're gonna start off at verse 19. And it says, now the works of the flesh are manifest, or another word would be exposed, all right? Which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of the Most High. So those who practice these specific sins that we're reading about in Galatians chapter five have no inheritance into the kingdom of the Most High. They will not be in Christ's kingdom. So it's very important, right, to find out your sins to know exactly what you're dealing with and what you need to work on before going into the water what to turn away from because it says those which do such things or those people who practice these specific sins right 
won't make it or have no inheritance. And so a lot of these words, I would have to say people haven't even studied them to find out what they are. What are these things, right? What is lasciviousness? What is it, what is it talking about? What is emulations? What is variance, right? So these are things that we need to really look at. And the best way to do it is for a person when they come in to the church, to the Gathering of Christ Church, is to go through a class, all right? Where you're learning. You're learning about sin. You're learning about Christ. You're learning about the Ten Commandments. You're learning about the dietary laws. You're learning about Christ's uh, uh, sacrifice and his death upon the cross and his resurrection. You're learning these things. Um, after you have uh, recognized what your sin is, now you have something to truly repent from, okay? And once you repent to, uh, of your sin, and what does repentance mean? It means a change of mind. And what you're saying is before you go to that water, you're no longer going to practice these sins or what is called transgressions, okay? You're no longer gonna practice those things. That's what your mind is saying. You have a, a made up mind that you're no longer gonna do these things. And that's the proper way to go to the water, okay? Now, repentance is, in a, in a, uh, the repentance is also uh, having repentance toward the Most High as well, okay? So when we repent of our sins, we also need to have repentance toward our Father in Heaven. In other words, we're saying to the Most High that we surrender our will to Him. We have a change of mind toward Him and we believe His report. We believe that He sent the Son of the Most High into this earth in flesh and that He died for our sins, He was buried, and He rose again. And we're having repentance toward Him. So let's look at that in the book of Acts chapter 20. So we're going to go to Acts chapter 20, verse 21. And it says, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks. Now notice what it says, repentance toward God. There it is right there. Repentance is a change of mind. We're having a change of mind toward God or toward the Most High and faith toward our Lord Yeshua Christ, all right? So we need to have a, a made up mind that we're gonna surrender our will to, a, to our God, to our Father in heaven, and we're gonna believe on his son, all right? We're gonna trust that when he said he sent his son into this world, we believe that. Because see, if we don't believe that the Most High sent his son into the world, we're calling him a liar. We're calling him a liar. And the Bible talks about that as well, okay? And I'll go into that as well. But we wanna take the Most High at his word and have a change of mind that his son is the only provision that we have for the atonement of our sins. That's really having a change of mind that, that what the Most High has provided for us is the only way out, all right? He's the only way out to overcome sin and he's the only way to make it into the kingdom, all right? and then we have faith toward Christ, all right? So those are things that we need to do. Um, we also, from there, from that point, is we're obeying the gospel, all right? We're obeying the gospel. Now, to obey the gospel, it means that we're going to believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ, and we're going to do something about that. If we really believe in Christ, then we get baptized, all right? So let's look at the book of Hebrews, chapter 5, verse 9. It says, And being made perfect, this is speaking of Christ, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all that obey him. All right, to all that obey him. So when we obey Christ, we are obeying the most high because he sent Christ, all right? 
So coming into this walk and being baptized is obedience. Being baptized, we're saying to the Most High, I believe the gospel and I'm gonna show my faith by getting baptized and coming under the authority of Christ, all right? And I've acknowledged my sins as well. And I have made up my mind that I'm no longer gonna practice those specific sins that I've been doing all the years of my life, okay? Let's look at Acts chapter five, verse 32. And, and, and actually, I'm going to start off at verse 30, Acts chapter 5, 30 through 32. And it says, the God of our fathers raised up Yeshia, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Him hath the Most High exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. Verse 32, and we are his witnesses of these things. And so is also the Holy Spirit, whom the Most High have given to them that obey him. So those who obey Christ receive the Holy Spirit. Okay, now why should we obey the gospel? Why should we obey Christ and get baptized? Well, let's look at that. There's reasons why we need to be obedient to this. Let's go to Matthew's chapter 17, verse five. Matthew's chapter 17, verse five. It says, while he yet spake, this is speaking about our Lord and Savior, Yeshua. Behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them speaking of the disciples and behold a voice out of the cloud which said this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased hear ye him so what did the father tell us what did the most high tell us he said hear his son listen to his son obey his son whatever my son tells you to do hearken and what's going on, and the dangerous thing that's going on right now is that there are people saying that baptism has nothing to do with your salvation. But what did the Most High say? If we obey Christ, we are obeying the Father. If we reject Christ, if we reject the baptism, we're also rejecting the Father, all right? He sent him, all right? So let's look at what Christ tells us to do, Mark. Chapter 16, verses 15 through 16. It says, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And we're going to deal with the gospel because remember, we are to obey the gospel. And Christ said to obey the gospel. Verse 16. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Now let's just stop right there. He that believeth and is baptized, not he that believeth only shall be saved. He said he that believeth and is baptized. So we don't separate believing in Christ and the baptism. They actually go together. If we believe, we get baptized, all right? Now notice what it says going forward. But he that believeth not shall be damned. So the person that doesn't believe in Christ is not going to get baptized. But if we believe in Christ, then we show our faith by doing exactly what Christ told us to do. And that is be baptized. So let's look at another uh, scripture in the book of Matthew. So I'm going to go to Matthew chapter 28. And I'm going to look at verse 19. Notice what Yeshua says here. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them. There it is right there. Baptizing them in the name of the Father 
and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So once again, those who believe in Christ, those who believe the gospel, Christ said to baptize them. This is not an option. This is obedience toward Christ. And therefore, through the baptism, through the baptism uh, uh, into Christ, we are receiving salvation. We are receiving eternal life. That's the, the beginning of it. Then we must, from there, lead a holy and set apart life. We must walk in the newness of life, all right? And um, not go back to the old man. Thank you.